Hi, my name is Chip Carmack, and today's video is about formal administration probate. This is the one that most people are thinking about when they hear the big scary word of probate. It is complicated, and it is time consuming, and it does cost money. And unfortunately, you will need an attorney for this. The reason being is that it is complicated, and in Palm Beach County especially, we have 440 to 480 probate cases every single month. You heard me right, 440 to 480 cases just in Palm Beach County. So the court system moves along nicely, but the reason that happens is because there are experienced attorneys that know the process and move the cases along nice and smoothly. The court is not gonna wanna have novices coming in and slowing things down and causing lots of problems. So they're gonna want you to have an experienced attorney, not just an attorney, they're gonna really want you to have an experienced attorney. And quite honestly, if you're gonna pay an attorney, you wanna have somebody that knows what they're doing. You don't wanna have it be, you know, cousin Jimmy that's never done probate, um, unless cousin Jimmy's gonna do it for free. Um, you know, the if you're gonna pay an attorney, pay somebody that has lots of experience and really knows what they're doing. Because quite honestly, they're more likely to save you money in the long run because they know what they're doing. So we'll talk more about formal administration probate right after this. Legal disclaimer. I am not an attorney, nor am I pretty blonde, brunette, or redhead, non-legal representative like you see on late night TV, nor do I play an attorney on television or here on YouTube. What I am is, is a certified probate expert who is here to help you in any way that I can. Hopefully you will find my videos helpful, informative, and will help you through the process for you and your family. If you do find yourself in need of legal representation, I have several very nice, very knowledgeable, and very helpful, experienced attorneys who can help you through any problem during the probate process. Please feel free to reach out to me for any question whatsoever. I'm here to help you. And now, back to our video. Hi, welcome back. Formal administration probate has the threshold of $75,000 of non-exempt assets in the estate. Exempt assets from counting towards that 75,000 would be a homesteaded house. If the house is worth 500,000, a million dollars, five million dollars, it really won't matter if the house is homesteaded. Another exemption of that is if the house is joint property. Say for example, uh, spousal. If the house is jointly owned and is passing from one spouse to the other, it will not be included in probate. Life insurance, annuities, things like that that have already have beneficiaries set up would not be included. The, the estate has to have more than $75,000 in assets. That's the major threshold for the formal administration probate. Step one of the process of filing this formal administration probate will be to file paperwork with the courthouse. Part of that paperwork would be to submit a will. If there is a will and but nobody can find it and it cannot be submitted, the court will assume that there is no will. So it is imperative to find the will if it does exist. Uh, the cases where there is no will is called intestate and that basically means no will. Uh, if there is a will, it's called testate, and everything runs pretty smoothly because everything's laid out in the will about who gets what. But if it's in testate, what it's gonna do, um, that means it's without a will. It's gonna follow Florida law, and for example, if there's a spouse, she's the first in line to inherit anything. Uh, children would be after that, and everything is set forth in Florida law. Uh, of how the, um, the assets would be administered. A big part of this process is being selected or having somebody be selected as the personal representative of the estate, also known as the PR of the estate. This person will have a lot of responsibilities. Unfortunately, the attorney will do a lot, 
but they won't do everything. It's going to fall on the personal representative to do quite a bit, and a couple of those things that are going to be needed to be done will be to make a list of assets and to make a list of creditors. The list of creditors can usually be gleaned from looking at bank statements, looking at invoices and statements that were mailed to the house or might be an email. You know, it'll be things like car payments, car insurance, maybe a house payment, house insurance, HOA, water bill, gas bill, electric bill, whatever. Um, those are going to be the known creditors. A very important part of this process is going to be filing what's called a notice to creditors and this is basically for the unknown creditors. There's usually creditors in an estate like this, um, not always, but there's, there could be creditors that are unknown and that's the purpose of this filing. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna put a notice to creditors in a local newspaper for two weeks and after two weeks you don't have to run it anymore and this is a notice to the world basically and even though it's a local newspaper it might not necessarily be say for example the Palm Beach Post, the Sun Sentinel, the Miami Herald it doesn't necessarily have to be a big newspaper. A lot of attorneys won't use a big newspaper because it's a little expensive um, especially for you know a law firm that's doing this over and over it can get rather expensive so they do what's legally required and they will put it in a local newspaper and this is notification to the world um, that um, you know John Doe has passed away and that if you have a claim you have 90 days to make a claim so the creditors that you know about that you make a list of that you submit to the courthouse um, they will have 30 days and you will contact them by certified mail and they will have 30 days to make a claim the ones that could come forward from the notice to creditors in the newspaper have 90 days. And for that reason, probate usually takes a minimum of about four months because it's going to be three months of that is going to be waiting to see if any creditors pop up off of the newspaper advertisement. A quick note about what an asset is. I've mentioned it before, but an asset is basically anything of value, especially anything of value that could be sold. So if you've got a baseball card collection in the estate or um, a 1955 Chevy Bel Air that's in mint condition, those are considered assets. So asset doesn't have to be just uh, real estate or money um, or stocks. It could be other things, basically anything of value that could be sold. By now, you should know whether this is what you need to do, filing a formal administration probate. If you do feel like you need to move in this direction, even if you don't, I'd highly recommend that you talk to a probate attorney. Most of them will give you a 30-minute consultation. So I highly recommend taking advantage of that um, and go in there armed with questions. Uh, I highly suggest you write out questions before you go in there and take good use of that time. Also, if you are going to have to file for formal administration probate, uh, you can ask me for this. It is a timeline of the probate process, and I'll be happy to send it to you. Um, I'll put a link down below of how to get it, and you can uh, contact me, and I'll be happy to send this to you. It's just an overview of how the process works so you know what to expect. Well, that's it for today's video of formal administration probate. I hope that you have found this video to be helpful and informational as those are my two main goals. Unfortunately, it's not funny or entertainment. Um, it's a serious process. It's a legal process. So. Um, even though I um, am a lighthearted person at times, um, this is a serious subject and um, I've got some serious attorneys that will be able to help you through this process and I'm here to help you through this process. It's not an easy time. Um, most people that are PRs have a life. They've got other things going on and this is added to them and added to their lives. So I know that it's just one more thing and it's not an easy thing. Um, it's estimated that attorneys usually wind up helping about 30% um, of the, the load for the probate 
uh, which means there's a lot that falls on the shoulders of the personal representative. So I'm here to help in whatever way that I can. If you look below, you'll see my phone number and my email. You can call or text me. Um, that's the best way to get a hold of me. I do respond to email, but um, phone calls and text are, um, I, I just feed off that all, all day long. So um, as I said, I'm not going to uh, stalk you or hunt you down. So um, I found that when people are ready, they're ready and they'll contact me. And um, they're when they're ready for help, that's when they reach out. So um, I would like you to subscribe if you would. And the reason being is not so that I can stalk you or hunt you. Um, it is for the sake of Google and YouTube. Um, most people don't know it, but they are owned by the same company. Google owns YouTube. And what they do is they see that videos are being watched. And they also see that subscribers subscribe to a channel. Um, if you don't click on notifications, then you won't be bothered. You won't get notifications that there's a new video. If you want that, that's fantastic. But basically, subscription subscribers tells Google and YouTube that, hey, this is interesting. When people are typing in probate or probate Palm Beach or probate Florida, and they watch the video and they subscribe, now YouTube thinks, hey, we should promote this to other people that are looking for the same thing. And that's the, my end goal, is to help as many people as possible. So if you'd be so kind as to subscribe, that would be very helpful, not only to help you, but also to help other people that are looking for helpful information in layman's terms. Thank you very much, and we'll see you in the next video.